this is crazy. They really put a whole set in this building. I do shows here all the fucking time. I did coke here. <laughs> I did, right back there, I did coke. First time I ever did coke, and I, I think last time, I don't know, my feelings, all right, they waver. <laughs> I never really did coke like that before. I didn't know what it does. I don't know if you ever done coke, but what it does is like, it unlocks a piece of you that you never knew you wanted to unlock. It makes you want to achieve a goal you never knew you wanted to achieve. It makes you try and reach out and be a better person that you never knew you. This is a very long setup for me to say that I made out with a nigga in the bathroom. <laughs> Boy, let me, let me tell you, man. I don't know if y'all ever been a man that made out with another man when you're not a homosexual, but that shit is gay. <laughs> that shit gay as hell, nigga. It's a whole man's face on your face. Just right here, nigga, kissing you. Gay. Gay. And you know, men are strong. They be trying to grab you and be more competitive and this shit. I grabbed this nigga in the ass. Like, nigga, square up, bro. What's, what's up, bro? Check up, nigga, if we hoping, we hoping. I'm a hooper, dog. Whatever it need to be, it could be. <laughs> I work on a show. I work on a show where we gotta talk about puberty all the time. We gotta talk about sex all the time. And everyone's like, you know, they're usually older or they're like very, they're smarter than me. <laughs> and so uh, they have to take my pussy jokes and dick jokes very seriously. And so one time during lunch, I asked one of the older writers in the room, she was very smart. She's like WGA certified, got a house, got kids, got her whole life together. And I was like, hey, what's the worst thing young men did sexually? Like, what, what, what's young men fucking up with? Why do you hate us so much? <laughs> and she was just like, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what? She's like, you guys just fucking fingers so fucking hard. <laughs> And every time I bring up this joke, everyone gets weird in the room, just like this. Because all the women in the room are like, speak on it. <laughs> and all the men in the room are like, come on, bro, chill, 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 chill out, bro. Come on, just hang out, nigga. What you doing up there? This is your time, not mine. Come on, what you, what you doing? You on TV, nigga. I'm just here with a hard-ass finger. I don't know what I did to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah trying to touch the bottom of a bitch rib cage and shit. <laughs> and you know, young bitches, they stupid. So they <laughs> Thank you for your service. They don't know how to talk yet. <laughs> and that leads to them saying stupid shit, like men don't know what a clitoris is. He didn't know what a clitoris is. That's why it was so bad. He has no idea what a clitoris is. Like, I do, I just don't like your personality. <laughs> And that's fine. Why do I gotta figure out this Rubik's Cube with my tongue when you never seen Cowboy Bebop, bitch? It's <laughs> easy. You go from the hole, you go north, you find that button that feels like the middle of a Roku remote. <laughs> you get the legs to go, <laughs> and then you get the stomach to tremble like that glass of water in Jurassic Park when the T Rex is on the way. And you're just like, oh, this bitch is about to come, bow! And then boom, you have a girlfriend for three weeks. It's pretty easy. <laughs> Talk about sex all fucking day at my job. It's nice, it's like, I, I like it. It's fun as fuck, bro. You, got, you know what you like. You learn what you want in this world. Like, I don't like when anybody calls anybody daddy. That's weird. <laughs> That's, you're fucking weird, bro. <laughs> Like, ladies, if there's any dude that's like, call me fucking daddy, like, just go give that nigga a therapy token. That is, that's a weird dude that he got to figure that shit out. Like, I don't, need, I don't need no woman to call me daddy to feel big. Like, can't, I, first of all, I can't even hear you because I'm usually choking you. So it's just, <laughs> I just don't, daddy, daddy, dad. It's, ugh, it's like cringeworthy. Like, I was at this girl's house, and her phone rang, and I saw it. And they said, Daddy, with a whole bunch of heart marks next to it. And I didn't say anything, because I'm a very responsible and respectful side nigga. And <laughs> the only questions I asked is what the Wi-Fi password is. Other than, other than that, I keep my motherfucking mouth shut. And since we on the topic, you know what's the worst thing about being a side nigga is when the main dude or the boyfriend or the husband starts slacking emotionally and doesn't take care of his girl in terms of conversation, and now you got to pick up his slack. and. <laughs> and go to farmer's markets to rub her feet and talk about her mama's health. This ain't my fucking job. My job is to come over, drop off dick, and steal LaCroix out the fridge. But, 
But now nah, this nigga ain't doing his job, bro. You need to learn how to love our queen. What's wrong with you, bro? <laughs> I'm trying to be better. I guess I'm dating a girl. What the fuck ever. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. What do I got to do? Start believing in God again? I believe in God. I just don't like people who believe in God. <laughs> Does that make sense? Like, I believe in God, but then you see meet niggas who believe in God. You're like, bro, shit. Ugh. <laughs> you know, maybe like people who like, love God. Like, love God. Like Chance the Rapper, chill out, nigga. <laughs> like his whole thing is like he loves God. And this is honestly, I get it, bro. It's like, it's just, like even God would be like, come on, bro, get off my dick. There's some hoes around. <laughs> you don't see thick ass guy over there? I don't know what's wrong with you, bro. This is coming from a place of pain. I'm the same age as a dude. I thought we were gonna grow up and he was gonna be the voice of my generation. He was gonna lead me through all this life shit and echo everything I believe in his music. And he just hit a hard left on me. You know what I mean? Like originally he came out with these things like 10 Day and Acid Rap, and I don't know if you don't know him, but like he came out with this music where I related to him. You know, he's talking about girls, he's talking about hating white people, he was talking, <laughs> you know what I mean? He, he, he was talking about just, you know, doing drugs. It was great. It was a great time. But out of nowhere, he just hit this hard left on everybody. You know what I mean? Out of nowhere, he was just like, hey man, I got a baby, a mortgage, and I'm thinking about running for mayor. I'm like, nigga, I don't have a bed frame. Slow down. <laughs> I went to go see, I only brought this up because I went to go see him at this place called Austin City Limits. It's a wonderful festival in Austin. It's a great time. And I went there to go see Chance. And I was on drugs because he came out with this tape called Acid Rap. And I thought it was going to be like a drug experience. And I was on shrooms. Not regular shrooms. You're like, ooh, the grass is wiggly. I was on shroom shrooms. So I was like, yo, I know who killed the Lindbergh baby. <laughs> <laughs> and so I stood in the way, way back so I could do karate chops and cartwheels and shit. And most of y'all been to a music festival, you know that shit. As soon as the artist comes out, the whole festival just rushes over. So I was just stuck in between everybody. And the shrooms were starting to kick in. So it got dark and sinister and scary. And I started thinking about like demons and spiders and how I didn't pull out fast enough in that girl last weekend. And how when I went through her mail, I didn't know her name, but she had two or three female roommates. So I really had to make a decision. So I just, so I just left and went home and never talked to her again. Anyways, Chance came out. <laughs> And he did this song called All We Got. And at the end of the song, he goes, music is all we got. And the crowd goes, music is all we got. He does it again, music is all we got. The crowd goes, music is all we got. And I wanted to join in so the shrooms don't make me scared. But I didn't realize that he was going to hit that hard left on me. And I also had my throat dry from the shrooms. So he goes, Jesus is all I got. And I join, I go, yeah. <laughs> He does it again, Jesus is all I got. I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, what the fuck is going on with me? And out of, nowhere, out of nowhere, my deceased Baptist church grandma whispered in my ear, he talk about you, baby. I was like, what? What the fuck are you talking about? And out of nowhere, Chance comes out, he's like, I could feel the devil in the crowd tonight. I was like, grandma, how the fuck did you beat this nigga to the joke? <laughs> So now I'm singing every single song off this nigga's mixtape like it's my only way to get into heaven. And he gets to this song called No Problems. You know what I mean? At the beginning of the song, he goes, I don't got no problems in my life because I got God on my side. So what I want y'all to do is if you see anyone who don't got God on their side, I want you to put your hands on right now and bless them right now. <laughs> and all five white people around me just went, hmm. <laughs> and started shaking his shit out. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they didn't even know the lyrics to No Problems. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I'm overthinking this shit because of shrooms, so they're standing in a five-point demonic star around me, speaking in tongues. I thought it was in the Da Vinci Code, directed by Jordan Peele. This shit was crazy as hell. <laughs>